Hey, what's going on everyone? So we're here with another video. Uh, so today we're not actually going to be working on the Mustang. We're going to take a nice break from it. Um, I do already have most of it already. I pretty much have the motor ready to come out uh, minus a couple little things. I think all I got to do is disconnect the starter wires, the ground, and the clutch cable and drain the power steering fluid. Um, but today is a special day because I got a new car or new SUV, I guess. So without further ado, here you go. So this is my new to me 79 Jeep Cherokee Chief. So quick walk around on this. Super clean. Yeah. Factory bumper has been painted black. Um, newer tires. I think these are 33s. Yeah. So 33 by 12 and a half on a 15 inch, you know, just your basic um, steelies. And it looks like. Oh, we already got a little bit of an oil leak, so we'll have to figure that out where that guy is coming from. Alright, so motor-wise, we got an AMC 360 in here. Let me zoom out. So, AMC 360, we... Cool thing about this, uh, it already has... I think this is a full MSD ignition system and not just a cap. Um, and a house fuel injection ses, uh, set up on it. So it's throttle body injection. So it's a two barrel carb style. So you kind of keep that cool old school look and get all the benefits from fuel injection, which is really nice. Uh, motor overall looks really clean. Um, I don't know where that leak will be coming from. Looks like it'll be coming from this side somewhere, but I would have to look into it. Uh, maybe something simple, maybe something very pain in the ass. Let's go underneath, check out the inner side of it. So, there we can kind of see our leak right there. Um, I don't know where. Oh, I'll look, I'll look into it some more. Uh, I believe the transmission is a TH400. We got a, you know, dual linkage transfer case into uh, some factory Dana 44s. I think the gearing is also factory in it. Um, I haven't really gotten a chance to test drive this because uh, I kind of had to have it towed to my house. Um, here, I'll show you guys what I mean why, but you know. Uh, exhaust is a little bit of a exhaust shop special and there you can actually see your O2 sensor because this car was carbureted so now it has an ECU and for the fuel injection and it uses a, a uh, O2 sensor to adjust the fueling in you know all that jazz uh, let's see what else uh, nothing fancy you know just standard run-of-the-mill 4x4 four four underneath, everything is super clean, no rust, no major rust, no nothing. You know, floorboards are super clean and intact. It looks like someone has sprayed them. It looks like it probably got a small patch right here at one point. But, you know, nothing crazy, nothing major. It, it looks like it's actually been really well taken care of and has gone through a little bit of a restoration progress uh process in the past uh i just noticed that what the heck is that oh well um let's see so there you go there's another little patch panel over there it looks like the floorboards haven't done on it um of course it's this is a california car so a catalytic converter to a flow master probably like a 44 or um was it? I think it's like the Super 10 or Super 40. I don't know, but it it sounds pretty good. I'll I'll go ahead and start it up for y'all here in a sec. Uh, E-brake cables being held away from the tire with a spring, well, of course. So, and it looks like fresh uh, drive shaft. So that's actually really nice. So Inland Empire drive shaft. So that if you 
can guess where I bought it from. I bought it from Ontario, California. So it looks the guy didn't have it too too long. I think he only had it of roughly four or five years. So we have some pretty fresh drive shafts in here for it. So that's also a huge plus. Um, tank looks solid, no rust on it. Uh, all right, so let's go up to the interior and check that out. All right, well, interior was clean. I don't know where I got all of these leaves from. Um, the previous owner did say that the uh, it has some fresh air vents that could be clogged with leaves, and uh, he was right. So on the drive here, uh, on the tow truck, it must have just blown out all that stuff. Um, so it looks like we got what says roughly 45,000. So my guess is 145,000 mile uh, car. And it honestly doesn't look bad for it. Um, so interior has been has gone through some light restoration. I got a couple little bit of spare parts with it too. Uh, not a fan of the speakers. I may have to do something with it just to make it look a little bit better. I may have to build a little speaker box that will actually conform to the side of the car and actually look good back there That because that just looks like they're about to fall off. Um, of course, we do have the electric back window, which is not functioning right now. Um, so we can't open up the tailgate. Uh, freshly reupholstered front and rear seats. Fresh carpet. This is that, you know, dual lever transfer case I was telling you about. And yeah, a little aftermarket stereo. It does have AC in it as well, which is really nice. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing started. See if it'll even start. All right. Oh, the fasten seatbelt then actually even works. There it goes. Started right up. Uh, looks like we got an oil pressure gauge. And uh, I think we're a little low on oil pressure. So uh, if you can guess what the issue of this car is. Well, actually no, it seems to be building. Sick! So it actually has pretty good oil pressure. So, motor sounds actually really nice, but it has a terrible secret. Um, if we were to drive this, we would have giant plumes of smoke coming out from behind us. See if I can give it a couple revs, see if I can get some smoke to come out. So there you go. You can already start seeing the blue smoke. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off before it gets too hot. Because I am going to be working in the engine bay. So yeah, there it is. A quick little walk around of the Cherokee Chief. So I always love these grills, man. They just look so freaking mean. Just imagine this thing in, the, in your rear view mirror. You know, it definitely tells you to get the freak out the way um so first things first that uh, i do want to start off with this car is um i was told by the previous owner that uh it does have low compression so i did not do a compression check on it i still decided to buy it like that don't know why um mainly just because it was clean it was a good price um and honestly just always I don't know. I like I like different cars, you know, something that looks different. Uh, don't like blending in with the crowd, so it, it fit my style. Uh, the motor doesn't seem like it'll be too much of a pain to pull. Uh, again, the only thing I'm really gonna hate to mess with is like anything power steering or AC related, just because I don't want to crack those lines and just make a mess everywhere. Um, so it looks like it's still like a factory style AC pump. It's it seen better days. It looks like someone spray painted it. Uh, fresh alternator in there. Fresh battery in here. Uh, overall, the motor looks like it, it's had some work done to it. So it, it was also what enticed me to get it. Um, so back to the compression check. So just, of course, just going to be using your basic run of the mill. O'Reilly's. Thank you. 
compression check tool. And essentially with this, all you gotta do is just take out your spark plugs, use the correct adapter, um, and just thread it in by hand, connect your gauge to it, and just turn it over about three or four times. Um, and it'll tell you the compression of each cylinder. And then you wanna mark every single cylinder and uh, write them all down. That way you have an idea, you know, how they're all doing compared to each other. And I think you don't want any more than like a 15 to 30% split, somewhere around there. Um, I'm just gonna look and see if I can find a smoking gun or something that's extremely obvious that would be bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the plugs and get this ready and kind of show you just one quick compression check. All right, so after removing all the plugs out of the engine, uh, so it actually looks really good. These things look brand spanking new. Um, they do smell a little bit like fuel probably because they started the the Jeep and didn't really let it get up to operating temperature. So uh, it's an old school style fuel injection. So, you know, you really got to let it warm up before uh, it really starts com completely burning off the fuel, but it's still leagues better than having a carburetor. Um, so right off the bat, it looks like all our driver's side plugs are actually nice and dry, but until we get to the passenger side, we actually have these two right here, number cylinder number four and cylinder number six, that appear to have a little bit of oil on them. They're a little wet. Uh, let's see if I can rub some on here. So there you go. Um, it looks like these two are going to be my culprits. So there you can just see all that oil that is completely drenching the plugs. Now, it doesn't always have to be a bad um, set of rings on, on the motor, you know? This uh, oil in the cylinder can be multiple things. I'm doing the compression check because uh, that will tell me probably the most with doing the least, right? So, on these engines, um, you have the intake manifold, and of course underneath that is just where all your lifters and your push rods are. So the uh, lifter valley and all that's just drenched in oil so if those gaskets aren't perfectly sealed it does have the possibility of sucking in oil and going straight into the intake runners and going straight down into your cylinder now number two it can be um you know your valve seats uh pretty much what seals the valve to the cylinder head so oil doesn't drip down into the combustion chamber so that can be the two but uh, the previous owner, he did tell me that he just had these cylinder heads freshly rebuilt. So, um, the top end could, it could be eliminated, but it could be really easy to pinch one of those gaskets or, uh, have a very slow leak that could appear later on in time. Now, number three, which is the most likely cause, because this is an old vehicle, uh, just worn out motors, you know, worn out bottom end. If it's all original, then, you know. God knows if that's 140,000, if that's just 40,000, 140,000, or 240,000 miles because they roll over at 100,000. Um, and the odometer starts over, so you'd never know what the true mileage of a vehicle is. Um, but seeing how well taken care of it is, I did want to do the compression check. We don't have a whole lot of blow by either. Uh, you know, it's not plume and smoke out the PCV. So I do, I, I am trying to keep my hopes up that it's not a compression issue, that it's actually a PCV crankcase uh, issue where it's something's just not properly sealed or not properly vented. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, take the filter off, unplug the fuel injection and get the uh, compression tester tool set up. All right, here we got the compression tester tool just thread it in you just want to do it hand tight nothing more um so there as we crank it it'll go up in compression we'll do about three or four you know uh cranks of the motor so you'll kind of see you'll kind of hear that the motor has a little bit of beat to it so i'll count to three or four and then uh call it a day on there so pulling all the plugs out does help a lot uh makes it a lot easier for the motor to turn over and also did put a jump box because we will just be turning over the motor and running that starter a lot so that will drain your battery.
Oh. Without further ado, let's get to her. And I don't have keys. All right, take two. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so I think that should be plenty. Let's walk out. Now we should see. There you go. We got roughly 120 PSI in cylinder number two. And then we got a little button right here uh, look, that looks to be broken. So I'm probably not take this information with a grain of salt, but there you go. That's how you release the pressure. You just push the little button. So I'm going to repeat this process through all eight cylinders and record my findings. And then I'll show you how they look like afterwards. Alright, well, we got our numbers in, and we clearly have one cylinder that's not too happy. So, 50 psi, that's no good, especially with all the oil. So, just by doing this one compression check, it kind of eliminated the whole possibility of it being an intake manifold gasket. Um, our two that I did think were going to be bad weren't actually horrible. So 110 and 105 for number four and six, but um, I guess aside with uh, cylinder one through seven, they were actually one pretty pretty good. 120, 120, 110. Uh, I just don't know why number five is just insanely low. Like that's if I feel like I should have at least one other one in in the similar category as that one. So uh, might dig a little bit deeper into this one all right cool cool so what we found is that no matter at what um, side of the lobe of the of the cam we do have one super loose um, rocker uh, we already pulled it off and it looks like our valve springs are at different heights so we may have a bent valve um, judging by the compression check yeah so and it's it's weird how it's only this one so i tested all of them i kind of just gave them the little wiggle test and spun the motor over multiple times to make sure that they were at top dead center for each piston make sure the valve was fully closed and again all of them nice and snug but for some weird reason this one is just insanely loose so clearly we have a valve train sealing issue not hopefully not a compression issue or a cylinder ring issue so it, it, it just it's just weird that the cylinder that's low on compression also has this this bad, bad intake valve uh on it as well so i'm gonna do a little bit more research see what could go wrong see if it's worth just pulling the cylinder head and leaving the rest how they are or just pulling the entire motor but Alrighty. Yeah. All right, had to come back inside because it just got blazingly hot outside. Um, so I bought the G back all back together, put everything back. Um, so it looks like. We may have we may have gotten lucky and it's just a bad um, something wrong with the cylinder head so we may just have to pull the cylinder head uh, only thing that sucks about doing that is that they always make a mess they always do so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to not make a giant mess in my driveway or figure out a way that I can clean it up properly for sure um, so I'm talking to my engine builder right now seeing what he thinks about it and if he says just to pull the cylinder head and that the compression on, on the rest of the cylinder looks good, then I think I might just do that. I think it'll be a lot cheaper in the long run. This I'm not trying to dump a bunch of money, not trying to build no crazy stroker motor for this Jeep. I just want a cool, reliable daily that's that's just cool that I can take off-roading that makes decent power, you know, just to at least get out of its own way. That's That's really all I care about. Uh, so this one is, I definitely have to abide by the budget because if i don't then i won't have much money left over for the mustang so the mustang's the real uh 
money pit, so I'm trying not to have two money pits. That's that's kind of my thought process there. So I'll uh, I'll catch you guys later. Um, hopefully in the next video we kind of already have figured out what's going on, and I'll try to get the motor all pulled uh, apart, take it over to a machine shop, and have them have them really like go through it, you know, under a microscope and see what what they think that the real issue is. It could be just a bent valve, could be the wrong valve spring, it could be a broken valve spring, or like a worn down valve spring, who knows. Uh, but for now, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.